I'm so happy that you joined me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. One of the things that you can do to make sure that your child's life has a great deal of beauty, meaning, and purpose in it is to nurture them. It's very fascinating. We understand feeding your kid breakfast because he's hungry, giving him lunch because he's hungry, making sure there's a meal on the table at dinner time. People are perpetually hungry. I want to assure you, the souls of people and the minds of people are just as hungry for nourishment. And it is your great privilege as a parent to nurture those things in your child by providing them nourishment. What in the world does that mean? <laughs> And what does that look like? I'm so busy just trying to keep my kid going. How in the world am I supposed to nourish and nurture their soul and their mind? I'm so glad you asked me that question. And a lot of other people have asked it, and I'm always excited to share. Okay, so babies, they love to be spoken to. In today's world, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to tell it to you very straight today. I have literally seen someone feeding a baby with the bottle propped on their shoulder on their phone. Please resolve today that you will never do that. Do you know that as we hold and feed a child, their eyes are the perfect distance from us to make a very strong emotional connection? So that if you sing to your child and talk to your child and inter interact with your child as you feed them as a baby, that you are nurturing and nourishing their mind and their emotions so they develop a strong attachment with you. That's true of moms and siblings, dads, grandparents. All of you as a family need to commit to the way that you are going to nurture your child. And when they get to be a little bit bigger and you sit down to have a meal and you put them in the high chair and you're running all over the place, you are missing an amazing opportunity to sit down with them. And even if they're able to kind of cram it in their face themselves to talk to them and interact with them and help them. And oh yes, they're gonna develop the greatest joy of all for little kids around the ages of eight to 16 months, and that is throw it down and watch you pick it up. And so instead of being angry and impatient and frustrated, you just pick it up however many hundreds of times that they want to put it down. And then you are nurturing in them a sense of patience and fun and enjoyment of their food and of the process of nourishment and nurturing. And when you have familial interaction at the table, so with me, I didn't even own a high chair, I confess. I never did. Even with my preemie and with my one-year-old going crazy, it just wasn't going to happen in my thinking. And so I held one in my lap who literally had their own plate. They didn't eat off of mine, but ate right here in my lap with me while I ate. And so we could talk and laugh and be crazy and go through the whole thing. And actually the other one, he was a lefty. So he was here on my right hand side and I would put him up on a stack of books and take a towel and had a chair with a back that had uh, ladder pieces. And I would literally tape him or tie him or safety pin him into the chair on top of those books. He couldn't get down and run all over. I told you he's a really hyperactive child. Uh, and I would feed him and talk to him. And often his, you know, my husband would talk to the kids or help out with the kids. But we ate meals together. I can tell you that all of my kids' lives, they ate meals together with me. And it's a huge time to nurture and nourish a child. How was your day? Oh, I hate Billy. He was hitting me and I, don't, I wanted to beat him up back. And so we got an opportunity to really know what was going on. I got an A on my spelling test. I didn't know some of my words. I was really upset about that. Just all kinds of things that nurture and nourish their soul happen at the dinner table. It isn't just feeding your mouth. It really is about feeding your soul. I'm also going to tell you an important statistic. Families that sit down and eat a meal together three nights a week. That's not actually a lot in my opinion. I think every night is better, but we'll be realistic about busy schedules. Three nights a week, 
have much healthier, happier children. That's a stat. Please look it up. And so this is a huge investment in nourishing and nurturing your child. Okay. So you go, you know, my kid, he's loved airplanes since he was a little kid. Everything he's ever done, he's made paper pl airplanes, he's zoomed them around. Every time we're in the store, he has this great tendency to go look at the airplanes and want to play with the airplanes. He's gone to the airport his whole life and wanted to see them take off. And that is something you need to nurture in your child. In today's day and age, especially where you have the internet, uh, at least a couple times a week, you can go and look at different kinds of airplanes. What do the interiors look like? What do the exteriors look like? Is it a prop plane? Is it a jet plane? What's the difference in the engines? Where are the engines situated? What in the world is propulsion? Propulsion, sorry. Um, help your kids find out. What, what does an aileron do on the back of the plane on the tail when they turn it around? Uh, what, just let your kids learn what, uh, what they what there is about airplanes that they can learn. And maybe it will develop into something that is lifelong love and something they do, whether they become an aeronautic engineer or a pilot or a, a, an airline attendant, but nurture in them what is interesting to them. When I was a kid, I was always interested in fabric. I was interested in color. I was always drawing and painting and doing all kinds of creative things. One time, I can say this, one time my mom and dad bought me this sand painting kit when I was a kid. That was a poodle, which was really weird because I hate dogs. And it was a pink poodle at that. But you put the glue down into these spaces and put the sand on. And the hard part for a child who was impatient and a little hyperactive myself was having to leave it long enough so it could dry. But it was really exciting. It was a really cool thing. And there were different textures as well as different colors in the sand that I put into this. So my mom and dad did recognize something about the creativity in me. Look at what there is in your child. What thrills them, what excites them, what they're interested in, and foster that. If they really truly love painting, then you need to be taking them to art museums. If they really love wood, uh, you need to get them some basic carpentry tools, a saw, a lathe, screwdrivers, a simple hammer. Let me tell you, my kids were interested in a lot of things because I'm a person who's interested in a lot of things. Consequently, my kids had all kinds of art supplies, lots of books. It might be a good time to mention to you because I think I haven't told you yet. I didn't own a television set when my kids were small. Actually, they were 9 and 10 when I first got them a TV set. Uh, that was very intentional because there were not enough hours in the day to do all the things that I needed to do as a parent and have to fight with my kids about TV too. And I wasn't going to fight with them, so I just didn't have one. It was the easier choice. I told you how my son had to hold on to my skirt or my shirt. He couldn't get farther away than that. That was also true in every part of my house. When I cooked, they were in the kitchen. When I cleaned, they were with me in the bathroom. They were with me in the living room as I vacuumed. Everywhere I was, they were there too. So they would play. They would paint. They would play with Play-Doh. They would draw. They would color. They would color on black paper and scratch it back off. I really love that one with little kids. It's awesome to see the wonder in their face. We would go to art museums. We would go to art shows. We would go to universities where kids would have art shows. We did all kinds of things. We would go look at interesting sculpture. Um, yeah, I just really fostered a lot of that in my kids, the love of beauty. We looked at nature. We would go for walks in the woods. We would talk about trees, how you can tell the difference between certain kinds of trees by their bark and their leaf formation, even some of their roots, whether they're deep under the ground or they're up near the surface of the ground. We would go fishing. My kids really love to fish, and I, I did like to fish, I admit it. We would look at the scales and the coloration and the fins, and oftentimes we didn't keep the fish, we would put them back. But when we did keep the fish, even when we went home, when we cleaned and gutted them and prepared them, we would talk about the difference in the way they tasted and how many bones they had, even what was going on in their internal structures. So they both actually don't love biology the way that I do, but they are interested enough in science. I got them a microscope. Of course, we had a telescope that we would go look at things through. We went to bigger universities that had telescopes that they could see the stars. You just want to nurture and nourish as many interests in your child as possible. 
because you don't know everything about them and everything they love. And the more things that you introduce them to, the more likely it is that they're going to find the great love of their life. And then when you see that in them, what really gets them excited, you start introducing them to that more and more in deeper ways and in more significant ways. And you literally nurture what God put into them. Or if it's a little more nebulous, like they're really a compassionate kid, a really caring kid. Uh, my one son was like that. There was a little boy in our neighborhood. Um, he was retarded. And one day, this boy that was reportedly my son's friend said to him, and this really is the child's name, so I can't change it. He said, you know, if you're going to keep playing with that spanky person, we're not going to be friends because I don't really like black people. And my son, he looked at his friend and he said, what is wrong with you? He is not black. He's brown. He had never even heard the word of any kind of designation about that little boy. And it was his good friend. And I really saw in him a great level of devotion and loyalty and the capacity for deep compassion. He still is like that. And I started nurturing that in him by doing things like taking him to a homeless shelter and we'd serve meals there or we would take their extra toys to a family violence center and they would share their toys with kids. Just, I fostered that compassion and that kind of capacity in him to care about other people. So you have to look at who in the world is your child and start to nurture the gifts and the ideas and the enthusiasms and excitements in their life. You have that capacity as a parent. And yes, I acknowledge to you that sometimes our kids don't love what we love. So you need to show them what you love. They need to have an appreciation for other people's desires and other people's interests. But then you also show that same appreciation and that same desire for what interests them and develop it. So what if they love photography? Well, I would suggest that you get them a camera. At least in today's world, it's digital. You don't have to spend tons of money on film. I was really interested in photography as a kid, and I belonged to the camera club. And I confess to you that my dad spent a lot of money. And it's not a lifelong love of mine. I did not hang on to it. But interestingly, I passed it on to my one of my sons. And my son is a videographer and a photographer. He, he probably does between 15 and 20,000 photographs a year. And he has for almost the last 30 years. He has a massive collection of beautiful photography and he's done shows and he's very interested in going to shows. And so he and I have gone to a lot of photography shows together. I'm just saying to you, give your child as many avenues of personal enjoyment as you possibly can, because there are enough troubles in life and enough challenges in life and enough frustrations in life that we really want life to be good and we want life to be beautiful and meaningful. You've got to foster beautiful, great, and meaningful things into your child's life. I really want you to do this. And yes, it's going to take you being maybe a little bit of a minor. You're going to have to really kind of look below some of what they're saying to get to the root of who they are and what is really interesting to them and foster that. I told you I crochet. So my kids wanted to learn. And just because they were boys, I didn't have trouble with that. I taught both my kids how to cross stitch. I taught both my kids how to crochet. I taught my kids how to macrame. I taught my kids how to do cake decoration. Just because they're uh, um, in your mind, perhaps uh, a boy or a girl, and they're that's like not their thing. Although, thank heavens, today's world is a little different than that. You need to help them develop strong skills at what they're interested in at their appropriate age level. And you need to keep on discovering who your child is and nurturing those things in their soul. My challenge for you today is to write down in your notebook the names of each one of your children. And if you don't know, it's perfectly okay. This is a discovery process. If you don't know what their strong interests are or the things in them that you desire to nurture, then put a question mark. That's perfectly okay. You'll find this out as we go on. If you know things you really believe they're interested in, put that beside their name. And then start developing ideas of how to nurture and foster in them 
what they really love. <laughs> May you have a great meal with your children today. May you have a lot of fun discovering the most beautiful parts of your child so that you can nurture those things and paint a beautiful picture into their life. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.